Energy Directorate of GD Research in the Energy Production and Distribution Systems Unit. We deal with hydrogen, fuel cells, uh, carbon capture and sequestration, and also electricity distribution systems. So today I'll be talking about uh, technology platforms, and in particular the European hydrogen and fuel cell technology platform, and then the growth initiative and the hydrogen economy quick start project, which is part of that growth initiative. First of all, um, technology platforms in general, they are essentially um, part of the Commission's research policy of integrating and structuring the European research area. So although there are many different types of technology platform, the, the concepts are similar to all of them, um, uniting all interested stakeholders around a common vision and approach for the particular technology, the definition of a strategic research agenda, which incorporates not only European level research, but also national and regional funded research, and the mobilization of a critical mass of research and innovation effort. The rationale, I think, is, is clear to all of you. One of the reasons we're here today is the Lisbon agenda. Uh, technology platforms contribute to that, and also the Barcelona objectives of 3% of GDP spent on research. The, again, the idea is to concentrate research effort, avoid the fragmentation that we know is uh, fairly rampant throughout Europe. There's a very strong link to the initiative of growth and the quick start projects. And of course, we hope that although centered in research policy, it has a positive impact on many other European policies. The main characteristics of technology platforms is that they address challenging issues for growth. They deal with major technological advances, um, normally in the medium to long term. There's very high community added value high research intensity. We need critical mass of research and innovation effort, and we need a common European approach. Now these characteristics will, um, why they're important will become obvious when I, I move on to talk about the seventh framework program. Other characteristics are a shared vision of all stakeholders, industry, research, public authority, all the way through to civil society and consumers. The mobilization of uh, many funding resources, so I repeat, we're not just looking at European funding here, we're looking to integrate European national funding, European investment bank funds, structural funds, um, Eureka projects, wherever funding is available, we're hoping to try and integrate the whole effort. And an important aspect is education, training, communication and dissemination. At the moment, there are some 18 European technology platforms, very different in nature and scope. Here you have some examples. In hydrogen and fuel cells, we're looking for radical change in the energy sector. Others um, look primarily at sustainable development right through to um, renewal of uh, industrial sectors such as steel. So there's a huge range of platforms and there are more emerging uh, almost every week. Now, in the six framework program, a lot of these platforms are just emerging, and our strategy is to support them um, in a financial way through financing the Secretariat or the development of the research agenda. Generally, uh, specific support actions of uh, two, three million euros. But we also fund projects. Um, integrated projects, network of excellence, um, targeted research projects which fall within the scope of technology platforms. However, towards FP7, uh, technology platforms will become probably one of the major axes of the seventh framework program. Now, the research agendas of many of the platforms that I've mentioned uh, can be implemented through the existing instruments particularly integrated projects and networks of excellence. But we feel that there are a limited number which, because of their ambition and the scale of the challenge, uh, will need some sort of new mechanism. And it's this new mechanism which will be in the seventh framework program. And the proposal there is to use Article 171, 
which allows the Commission to set up joint undertakings and other structures to implement the research program. Um, so for a very limited number of these technology platforms, we will probably launch um, what are currently called joint European technology initiatives, which will be based around joint undertakings and could have a very substantial amount of uh, research money associated with them. I'm happy to say that hydrogen and fuel cells is one of the candidates for this uh, joint technology initiative um, and we're hoping very much to be able to have a large program in the seventh framework program. We enjoy very widespread political support um, for hydrogen and fuel cells uh, right from the President of the Commission himself, Vice President de Palacio who is also uh, Commissioner for Energy and Transport and of course the Research Commissioner for Philip Busca. Um, indeed, uh, Romano Prodi himself, during a press conference once, said that he wanted to be remembered for two things during his term of office. One was enlargement, and I think we're very close to success there, and the other was the launch of the European effort on hydrogen. So we're very privileged to be leading that effort towards his vision. Why is it important? Um, here there's a, a summary of some of the main drivers. Um, increasing energy demand, particularly in transport, and in countries of the world such as China and India. Security of energy supply, which was mentioned uh, just earlier, a very strong driving force. Climate change, obviously we have our commitments under Kyoto that we have to uh, comply with. Increasing air pollution in cities, and of course industrial competitiveness, which is, from the research side, driving our agenda. Various background documents to support the initiative, uh, the green paper on security of supply, white paper on transport, uh, the biofuels directive. Uh, recently come out is the Environmental Technologies Action Plan, which specifically mentions technology platforms as an instrument. And of course the various research communications of which uh, more research for Europe. And we must also remember the, the, European, uh, the international context. Uh, we are competing in this field, particularly with the United States and Japan, and they are both uh, fairly aggressively investing in hydrogen and fuel cells. Uh, Japan in particular have set very ambitious targets and they are driving uh, towards meeting them. We have various uh, international cooperation agreements which the technology platform will um, become involved with. So I'll mention three things in the European response to this uh, international uh, cooperation challenge. The framework program for research, the technology platform and the initiative for growth. So we have um, a fairly healthy portfolio of projects uh, from the first call and we're hoping to increase that substantially in the, in the next call. Here um, I've just listed the, the portfolio of projects for hydrogen. I believe that you'll be getting a copy of these slides, so um, I, I won't go through them. Just to perhaps emphasize that we're tending more towards integrated projects uh, than other types of instrument. So we're currently in the process of revising the work program. Um, perhaps just to point out two key dates. We're hoping to have joint calls on hydrogen and fuel cells uh, launched in June of this year and September of this year, and the next major call for um, energy will be in September. All of these calls will close in December of this year. So those are dates that you need to keep in your diary. On now to the technology platform. Uh, it has a fairly straightforward objective to facilitate and accelerate the development and deployment of cost competitive world class European hydrogen and fuel cell based energy systems across all the various applications, transport, stationary and portable power. A brief history here, we started in October 2002 with the High Level Group which delivered their vision report um, at a major European conference in 2003. The President Romana Prodi then issued a communication calling for the development of a European partnership on hydrogen and fuel cells and that led directly to the formation um, of the Advisory Council in December of last year and then the launch of the technology platform itself in January of this year. This is uh, a diagram from the vision report 
Um, I don't think you'll be able to read it from, from where you are, certainly not from the back. But uh, the key point to retain is that this is not something that's going to happen overnight. Um, you can see there the date's going up to 2050, and it's going to be a very long-term process. And this technology platform will have to set in, in place uh, a structure that will be durable over several decades. Participants, uh, in line with the general concept of technology platforms, cover the whole range of stakeholders from the research community through to civil society. Um, there are various bodies of the platform and it's a very open and transparent structure which allows participation on quite a number of levels. I think if I, if I show you this slide it might be easier to understand. It looks fairly complex but we uh, consider it as something of a jigsaw and we are slowly putting into place all of the elements needed to make up the, the, the technology platform. So the status there, we've set up the advisory council, we've set up the member states mirror group. Internally in the commission we've set up a project team across all the directorates general that are involved. Uh, we had a first general assembly meeting of the platform in January and we're currently negotiating a contract for the platform secretariat which we're hoping will start in the next month or so. We're also starting up steering panels on uh, the research agenda and deployment strategy and they have both started their work um, within the last months. So they're two initiatives that will um, take up a lot of activity for the rest of this year because we're looking to them to define our strategy for the seventh framework program. We're also setting up initiative groups on uh, codes and standards, financing, education and training and uh, there will be various others set up in the course of events. Just to pick out uh, some bodies, the Advisory Council is really the driving force behind the, the whole technology platform. Currently there are 35 members, um, but uh, importantly for you I think there are two seats on the Advisory Council reserved for um, participants from the new member states. Uh, those seats are currently vacant, so if you have any candidates to propose, we would be very, very willing to, uh, to receive them. And secondly, the Member States Mirror Group, which is uh, to take forward the vision of the, the platform at the Member State level. Here, I have to say again that uh, we have candidates from most of the new Member States, except Poland and one other. So I would urge you to, to nominate a candidate to the a mirror group as soon as possible to get involved uh, with the activities on that level. The EU role in the platform, uh, just to summarise it, we initiated it but we don't own it, it's actually owned by the stakeholders themselves, but we do get involved uh, very actively at a number of levels and we will continue to be behind the platform and uh, drive it forward. Just very quickly on the initiative for growth, it was adopted um, on the 11th of November by the Commission. It went to the Competitiveness Council in November and their conclusions were that they, they welcomed the initiative and asked uh, the Commission of Member States to, to move things forward and these conclusions were endorsed at the Brussels European Council of December. So there's very strong political support behind the whole initiative. These are the main areas. Uh, it defines the areas for action, the quick start programme, looks at the financial tools that will be necessary to implement the program and various non-financial measures which we'll need to support. Particularly interesting for us is the Quick Start program which has two elements, one investing in networks, the other investing in knowledge which is where the, the research directorate general comes in and specifically in hydrogen one of the Quick Start projects is on the hydrogen economy and this has two main components Hypogen, which is large-scale production of hydrogen. Um, and this is particularly interesting for our, our questioner here because that will be based on fossil fuels. And it will be hydrogen production from fossil fuels with large-scale carbon sequestration. The second aspect is uh, the HICOM initiative, which is hydrogen communities um, establishing real working communities around Europe. It's a uh, project with a very long time perspective, you can see it's up to 2015 and uh, we're currently working to put it in place. 
So very quickly, we are, we've asked the Joint Research Centre to carry out a feasibility study. One of the joint calls I mentioned will be for an integrated project to commence the Quick Start project. And we're on going with discussions within the technology platform with the European Investment Bank and Member States to find the financing for the rest of the project. So that's, uh, that's all I have to say about hydrogen fuel cells. On this slide you'll find um, some websites uh, as to how you can stay informed. Obviously CORDIFs for the uh, six framework program in general, the energy research website, and the one at the bottom there is the CERCA website for the technology platform which has all of the documents related to the Advisory Council, the Mirror Group, and so forth. So to follow the events of the technology platform, uh, you can go to that last site. So thank you for your attention, and I think my one message is please get involved with the technology platform and nominate candidates. Thank you. <laughs>